Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Jeffrey Epstein Show. I'm your host, Bobby Capucci, and this is a morning update. Sorry about the late drop today, folks, but I had to go brave the wilds of the grocery store to pick up a few items for the lockdown. And I'll tell you what, it was not as big of a shit show as it has been the last couple of times I've, I had to go. I was even able to buy some, you ready for this? Toilet paper. Not just a couple of rolls, either. They had a 30-pack. I felt like I just hit a 10-team parlay when I walked in and saw a 30-pack of toilet paper in there. <laughs> I mean, can you imagine this is what we've become? Uh, we, we went from uh, just a, a mere few weeks ago of having an excess of everything at our fingertips in the Western world, especially here in America, to waiting in line like uh, we're in the old Soviet Union trying to get some gruel. Pretty crazy how quick shit can flip, right? Anyway, I'm pumped that I was able to get that toilet paper, and I know that I'm officially old when I get excited about getting things like toilet paper or if uh, light bulbs go on sale on Amazon. You know, when you get pumped up about stuff like that, you are officially old. So, our article today, we're going to talk a little bit about Ghislaine Maxwell's twin sisters, and this is an article from The Cut, and this article was released on August 21st of 2019. The author of the article is Bridget Reed. The headline, Ghislaine Maxwell's twin sisters have their own wild stories. I mean, does that shock anybody that Ghislaine Maxwell's sisters are crazy as well? They all grew up with uh, Papa Maxwell. They all grew up in that same sort of uh, court of mayhem that Bob Maxwell lived in. So is anybody shocked that they have their own wild stories or they're both effed up as well? As Ghislaine Maxwell, Maxwell hides out somewhere in the world, at one of America's burger joints, or maybe in her boyfriend's seaside mansion, or neither, her unconventional family with its own scandalous history has come back into view. And of course that happens, right? If you have one of these, uh, you know, eccentric families, one of these families where there are a lot of people who are, uh, you know, odd, I guess you would say, uh, involved in some weird shit, well, that is the Maxwells. They're definitely one of those unconventional, uh, unconventional families where they have a lot of uh, people involved in a lot of odd shit. And when you have someone like Ghislaine Maxwell who gets thrusted to the forefront of the news, of course, it's going to shine a light on her family as well, and people are going to start digging, and people are going to start searching for whatever they can find that has to do with Ghislaine Maxwell's upbringing. On Saturday, we got a rare glimpse of Maxwell's 69-year-old sister, Christine, who was spotted packing up a car outside of a hotel near the Manchester-by-the-Sea residence where Ghislaine had been rumored to be staying. So, again, I have no idea where Ghislaine Maxwell is or was. I haven't seen any sort of credible evidence that would, uh, that would point us in a direction where we could find her. But back when this article was, was uh, first published... Of course, they, you know, they were just on to the case, right? They were just looking into where Ghislaine Maxwell might be. So, who knows? She might have been at, that, uh, at the mansion uh, by the Manchester by the Sea at some point, And she might be there today. Again, I have no idea. It's the first sighting of one of Maxwell's family members since pedophile billionaire Jeffrey Epstein's arrest and death and a hint of whom Maxwell might be leaning on as she avoids the authorities. She has been accused by several Epstein survivors of helping to traffic dozens of underage girls for sex, some of whom are suing her as a co-conspirator in Epstein's crimes. This is a great article by The Cut. They're using all the right language and everything, and this was back in August, okay? Co-conspirator, pedophile, but one thing that I think they're missing here is I doubt that Ghislaine Maxwell would attempt to hide with her family. I think that would be one of the first places that private investigators would look, the authorities would look. I think that Ghislaine Maxwell would have to go deep into her war chest and find people that she knows are about that life, the life of protecting somebody like her, the life of uh, living uh, very cautiously so that your cover isn't blown. So I don't think that she would be with the Maxwells, with her family. I, I believe that she's with other operatives or people who have uh, been operatives at some point. And we know that they have safe houses all over the world, right? Who knows where she could be? 
I'm not going to sit here and, and make a guess. I don't, I, I doubt though. One thing I will say, like I, I said previously, when we were talking about this a little bit, one thing I will say is I highly doubt that she is still in the United States. If she was in the United States, she would be put on blast already. They would have found her. The PIs would have found her. The law would have found her. Somebody would have exposed where she is. So I highly doubt she's in the United States right now. Christine is just one of Maxwell's seven living siblings. Her sister, Corrine, and brother, Michael, died at ages 3 and 15. A brother, Philip, and the eldest daughter, Anne, have not been heard from publicly for at least a decade. But tracing the four others, Christine and her twin sister, Isabel, Kevin and Ian, along with Ghislaine, who at 57 is the youngest, is like watching a real-life season of succession as these heirs to their disgraced media mogul father's empire have strived toward their own ambitions. That is a great, a great comparison. Now, if you don't watch this, the show Succession, as soon as you're done listening to this podcast, go do yourself a favor, throw on HBO and watch the show. It is absolutely amazing. It's about a media mogul and his family that is all jockeying for position to try and take over the reins from their father. And of course, there's a bunch of other stuff, subplots that are going on, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But I, I cannot recommend that show enough. Me and Lisa from the Prince and the Pervert podcast were just talking about it a little bit, and uh, she's she's into the show as well, obviously, and it's just awesome. And it really mirrors the Maxwells almost, right? This is really a good comparison. I I never really put two and two together thinking about it because I never really think about the Maxwells as a whole family unit. I'm so focused on Ghislaine or Robert most of the time that I sometimes forget about the sisters and how involved they are and how they've had their fingers in a lot of pies as well. So I'm glad that I, I, I pulled this uh, article out of the archive today and decided to use it because it gives us a little refresher course and reminds us that Maxwell's family, they're also smarmy. Twin sisters Christine and Isabel are the most fascinating of the bunch and have their own ties to entrepreneur, uh, entrepreneurs, unorthodox, and in some cases, shady men. The family patriarch, media mogul Robert Maxwell, built the publishing empire and political career in the United Kingdom. We just talked about Robert Maxwell. We just went through the whole, uh, the whole situation of his death and the aftermath, etc., etc. But we know that Robert Maxwell was connected big time. And we know that he was also seriously connected when it comes to intelligence. Now, he had a state funeral in Israel after he passed away. That doesn't just happen for anybody. Not just anybody gets a state funeral in Israel. It's only for people who have, you know, done something to help the, the further the cause of the nation, right? And that's like anywhere. But Robert Maxwell, well, we know what he, how he was furthering the cause. We know that he had his hands on some very, uh, let us say, devious strings. But he died suddenly in 1991 from a supposed fall from his yacht, though there is speculation that he was pushed after it was discovered that he had plundered his company's pension funds to cover his debts. Maxwell's sons, Kevin and Ian, who had been working for their father, were caught up in the investigation of his fraud. Since then, they've laid somewhat low as businessmen. Now 60 and 63 respectively, it is unknown how much contact they've had with Ghislaine but neither one has made a statement about her publicly for many years. And it's interesting, right? Now, either they just keep everything close to the vest and they learned their lesson from their father and at his side of how to conduct themselves when it comes to um, making sure things are quiet and making sure they're not divulging information. Or they might have just said, you know what? She's too sick even for us. We don't want anything to do with her. Who knows? You know, there's no information about Ghislaine Maxwell's relationship with her her brothers for, that I know of, or even to a, a deep extent, the rest of her family besides the relationship with her father. But there's really, ha I mean, I don't know of any journalist or author who has sat down with one of the Maxwells and gotten a full story from them. If anyone has seen something like that, I would love to see it. So if you if you have access to that and there's a, an article perhaps where one of the Maxwells has sat down and spoke with uh, and spoken to um, a journalist, I would definitely love to check that out. So make sure you send that to me if it's out there and I've missed it. Christine and Isabel had more freedom to strike out on their own after the demise of the Maxwell empire. 
In the 1980s, they decamped to Silicon Valley, and in 1993, they helped co-found Magellan, an early search engine, with Isabel's then-husband, David Hayden. I, man, I remember the Magellan search engine back in the old, old, old days when the internet first started. You know, then obviously you had uh, internet, uh, the, um, the uh, America Online, and then you had, uh, God, there was another one, it's escaping me right now but there was all sorts of these kind of things when the internet first started and uh obviously aol was the uh the big gorilla in the room according to the daily beast the sisters appear in michael wolf's book on dot-com startups burn rate wolf describes christine as more commanding than her sister but both maxwell's are memorable characters early winklevost prototypes in a 1997 interview, Isabel credits her sister with coming up with the idea of reviewing and rating. Again, you see what I'm saying here, folks? These, these women have been ensconced in Silicon Valley since the early 90s. And they've been involved in the, the creation of a lot of computer programs, a lot of programs that are used by governments around the world. And my question has always been, what sort of backdoor did they put into those operating systems? What sort of backdoor did they create for themselves so that they can remotely access those programs? Now, of course, you want to, if you're being skeptical or this is any other case, you're like, ah, oh, come on, you can't, you can't really think that they're going to do that. But then when you think about who they are and their stock, who their father is, who their sister is, the sort of people they've hung around with, then you start to see a bigger picture emerge and you say to yourself, well, eh, it's pretty likely that they added some sort of backdoor software to the programs that they created. The twins made millions when Magellan was sold to another company, Excite, but according to Isabel, it cooled the relationship between the two of them. When McKinley, Magellan's parent company, didn't make it, our relationship changed, Isabel said in 2002, and I changed in terms of my relationship with my family. Before then, I was completely in sync with the family. When something got to them, it got to me too. So after 2002, everything seemed to go south for them and their relationship changed. And also of note, in 2002, Ghislaine Maxwell was at basically her pinnacle with Jeffrey Epstein. They were flying high in 2002. Everything was going good for them. They had all the pieces in place. The well, machine was a well-oiled machine. Things were moving. Nothing was breaking down. They had all the proper pieces around them. And the criminal organization was on its way to becoming what we've seen at its peak when it was destroyed. Well, I shouldn't even say destroyed because we don't even know that for a fact if it's destroyed, right? I should say until the, the head at the time, Jeffrey Epstein, was arrested. So again, I'm not willing to say that the trafficking uh, ring is even destroyed. Who knows? We don't have any information about that, right? We don't know what these people are still doing in the dark. So... 2002 was a, uh, a year for not only uh, Maxwell's sisters of them having their relationship kind of go on the skids, but it was also a point in time where Ghislaine Maxwell was at her peak of being involved with Jeffrey Epstein and having the whole entire honey trap uh, put, uh, put in motion and moving forward. Since then, both sisters seem to have remained in the software and technology spheres. Christine is a doctoral candidate in the humanities department at the University of Texas at Dallas and continues to consult for her internet for internet companies. Her UTD website lists a personal website, christinesworld.com, which is no longer active, but it does have the brief personal statement that she came to the university in January 2012 and she's enjoying academia and the associated activities of big city life very much. It's much different from the French countryside where I was working on my own internet content projects. Ah, boy. So we see here that she is still uh, working in computer software, that she's going for a degree here, a uh, technology degree. And that sort of thing is worrisome to me because we don't know, again, what sort of backdoor these people are putting into these programs. And I hate to say it, but if your last name is Maxwell and you're related to Ghislaine, I do not trust you. After Magellan, Isabel was the president of an Israeli email venture called ComTouch and has continued to work in the country. 
She has used the title Technology Pioneer of the World Economic Forum. In, the, in a 2000 interview, she displays a Zuckbergian enthusiasm for the internet. The wonderful thing about email is it's not sexist, she said. It's democratizing. Uh, okay. These pe- I'm, I'm telling you, these sort of people, the Maxwells and people of their ilk, they're just weird to me. I don't even, I can't even comprehend the way they think and the way they live their lives. Everything is so convoluted. Everything is, uh, everything is thinking 10 steps in the future about making a power move, about how they can consolidate their power. And even these sisters, you see them, they, they have a very high opinion of themselves. The Maxwell's twin, twin husbands have truly bizarre histories, which has led observers to point out that they share Ghislaine's association with powerful and unconventional men. Christina is married to Roger Molina, an astrophysicist at the University of Texas whose father, Frank Molina, was also a scientist. Molina, the Daily Beast reveals, hung out in California with the likes of Scientology founder L. Ron Hubbard and rocket engineer Jack Parsons. Occultists and transhumanists, a strange echo of Jeffrey Epstein's friends in similar academic and business circles. So you see it here. Look, this, these people, this doesn't happen in a vacuum, okay? Her sister's busy hanging out with transhumanists, occultists, etc., etc., the same kind of people that Jeffrey Epstein flock to. The same sort of people Jeffrey Epstein collected. So I, I have a hard time believing that all of this wasn't being done in, in a uh, concerted effort. The, you know, the, the Maxwell family in general worked together when it came to stuff like this, in my opinion. I, I, I don't believe that the sisters had no idea what was going on with uh, Jeffrey Epstein and Ghislaine. Oh, they definitely knew what was up. And they were also involved in writing these programs and being involved with all of these software companies that were then uh, uh, distributed amongst other countries. And there was all sorts of security problems. And, you know, this it just stinks, right? The whole Maxwell family stinks from Robert Maxwell on down. And Isabel's romantic history might be the strangest. First, she married the son of Carl de Rossi, a scientist who invented the, invented the birth control pill. Then her, uh, their, Carl de Rossi and her son, Alexander de Rossi, remember, worked for the State Department under Hillary Clinton. And he, was, he had a big role in the Arab Spring, the failed Arab Spring that has went on to give us nothing but misery in the Middle East, including an open-air slave market in Libya. Her third husband, Al Seckel, was a con man and optical illusionist who, bef- who befriended scientists and academics despite not having a degree in those fields himself. Boy, does that sound familiar, huh? Him and Jeffrey Epstein, kindred spirits. He co-founded a group called the Southern California Skeptics that investigated science relationship to the paranormal. Seckel and Isabel moved to France at some point in 2010, according to reports, where they lived in a chateau and acquired thousands of Stone Age tools to sell in the U.S. That same year, Seckel hosted a scientific conference on Jeffrey Epstein's private island where Epstein also allegedly held underage girls for sex. Presumably the connection was Isabel's little sister, Ghislaine. Of course that was the connection. Of course that was the connection. What do you think, that this all happened in a vacuum? That Ghislaine's sisters weren't involved? That they didn't know? That they weren't friendly with them? That El, that people like Al Seckel weren't going to be drawn to Jeffrey Epstein because they knew that it could move their own stock higher? Of course that was what was going on, folks. Seckel died in 2015 from a rumored fall off a cliff near his home. Uh, yeah, you know, there should... How many so-called suicides are going to be around the Maxwell clan. I mean, again, they want us to believe in a lot of coincidences, folks. A lot of coincidences that I am not willing to believe in, all right? I, so all of these people just happen to slip and fall, one off a boat, one off of a cliff. Jeffrey Epstein just happened to slip and fall off the top bunk. Come on. They really want us to buy all of this shit. Not unlike Robert Maxwell, according to an obituary, Seckel died just a few weeks after an article in Tablet Magazine exposed his fraudulent past and his mounting debts. But the Daily Beast reports that it has not been able to find official proof of his death. Afterward, Isabel had to declare bankruptcy. Man, this is just, this is so crazy. Uh, Seckel is a crazy cat in general. His whole story is just 
insane. He was an absolute con man and a fraud. He was involved with the Edge Foundation that Jeffrey Epstein was involved in. And who knows what else, right? Obviously, he was involved in all sorts of fraud. But my question is, was he also involved with any of the other players that were um, running Epstein? What else did Seckle know? Did Seckle have any information? Was Seckle also being run as an asset from the shadows? Because we all know that intelligence agencies sure love to make it look like a suicide. And Maxwell, Epstein, Seckle, all people that have a lot of skeletons in their closet and who undoubtedly held a lot of secrets. For all of them to die under these sort of circumstances, is just, it's a bridge too far for me. Last week, it was rumored that Ghislaine Maxwell might be staying in Mariul, France, near her mother's old estate, where Christine and her husband supposedly spent some of their time. That is, until, that is, until it was reported that they sold that home in 2015, and until Christine was seen packing up a car near Manchester by the sea. A day later, the mysterious photo of Ghislaine in Los Angeles was leaked to the New York Post, possibly by a lawyer who once represented Kevin Maxwell. It's unknown how much contact Ghislaine has with her siblings, but it seems increasingly likely that at least one of them know where she is. And that's pretty interesting there as well. Christine Maxwell wasn't seen until 2015 packing up a car at the house near Manchester by the sea. And then a day later, the photograph which people, you know, the Photoshop photograph of in and out etc., etc., pops up of Ghislaine Maxwell saying that she's in Los Angeles. So, again, if we're dealing with regular people, you could just say, oh, yeah, well, no big deal, you know, maybe it, it, it was a coincidence. But when we're talking about Ghislaine Maxwell at this point, I don't think anything is a coincidence. Everything's obfuscation, everything's cloak and dagger, everything's spy games. And everything, everything that she does is done for a reason. So whenever she talks to the media through Laura Goldman or whoever she talks uses as a mouthpiece, there's a reason. Her picture being released like this when her sister's packing up at Manchester by the Sea, there's a reason. So again, I don't know where Ghislaine Maxwell is, but I do know this. She's playing games. She's using the media to her benefit. She's using reports to her benefit. And meanwhile, while these reports are coming out and she's muddying the waters, she has a game plan. She knows what she's doing. She knows what the next move's going to be. And until she is completely and utterly out of moves and has nowhere left to turn, we're going to keep seeing this sort of thing from Ghislaine Maxwell. We'll, we'll, the, the way that she goes about her business, the way everything is planned and is part of... See, nothing is ever just one move with Ghislaine Maxwell. One move always signifies that something bigger is coming down the pipe. And we saw that with how the how everything uh, moved forward with her talking to Laura Goldman through the sun. Oh, I was hacked. And then, oh, I'm going to sue Jeffrey. You know what I mean? So when all of this stuff comes out and uh, you see it all in the big picture, it's hard to not understand what Ghislaine Maxwell was up to. It's hard to not understand what she was doing. And she is playing chess while the prosecution is busy playing checkers. So remember, every time Ghislaine Maxwell supposedly says something in the media or has a statement, you have to look deeper into it. Never take it for face value. There's always a deeper meaning with Ghislaine Maxwell and what she's attempting to do and what her plans are. So we have to be very cautious about what gets leaked about her and what we take at face value and what we know is BS. It's gonna, it takes a lot of uh, research and you have to really, really, really take a look at what she's saying and never, never just accept her statements at face value because it's too, uh, the, the pattern, the historical pattern that she has shown us in the, in, in throughout this whole entire case is she is always plotting and planning and maneuvering. She's always looking to manipulate the narrative and she's always looking to put herself in a position where she is in control of that narrative. And now that that's starting to crumble down around her ears and now that people are starting to call her out from every corner you can possibly imagine, she's starting to feel like she's trapped. And that's why we saw the barrage of the media 
uh, comments through Laura Goldman because she was trying to shake trees and let people know who were involved that if she goes down, they're all going down with her. Ghislaine Maxwell is not the kind of person that is going to ever give herself up or is ever going to come in without being dragged in, kicking and screaming. And for that to occur, the prosecution needs to go 100% pedal to the metal all the way down in pursuit of these people. Because you see from the article that we just read, we're not dealing with normal people here, right? We're dealing with people that are very connected. They have a lot of connections, not only in uh, private life, but in the public sector. And they have people in the media, or they used to have people in the media, that were willing to protect them. And Ghislaine Maxwell has been a master at using the media to move the narrative in the direction she wants it to go. But those days are over. Nobody's buying that anymore, and everybody's on to the media for their role in protecting Jeffrey Epstein and Ghislaine Maxwell at this point. So nobody's buying that shit anymore. Every time Ghislaine Maxwell says something, everybody pulls out their, you know, their uh, microscope to take a better look at it. And that's what has to happen. Because we can't let these people control the narrative, and we can't let their friends in the media run the narrative that these scumbags try and trot out. If you'd like to contact me, you can do that at bobbycapucci at protonmail.com. That's B-O-B-B-Y-C-A-P-U-C-C-I at protonmail.com. And if you'd like to find me on Twitter, you can do that at B-O-B-B-Y underscore C-A-P-U-C-C-I. All right, everybody. Until later on during the Daily Drop, hope you all have a fantastic day.